Hey guys, Coach Mike here. One of the things that I think would have helped me uh, when I started out was to see how somebody's setup looked and what they needed when they were going to do P90X and Insanity. So I was going to show you today in terms of what I have, what I use, and where I use it in my basement. So this is my workout area. You can see it's also my kid's playroom. This is the real world. I don't have a separate workout room. So I pull this stuff out every morning, or the night before is even better. What I have here is this is this is a mat that I bought. Uh, I bought this when I started Insanity because I was sweating so much over the carpet I didn't want to start ruining it. So this this mat's worked pretty well for me. Um, it also helps while you're doing push-ups, things like that. I usually also use this for my uh, when I'm doing ab ripper X and other sit-up exercises. My push-up bars I've been using are the Perfect Push-ups. They work pretty well for me. I got them about a year and a half ago. My my wife gave them to me, and I've used them for the whole program. I do plan on trying Tony's push-up bars just to compare and contrast, but these uh, these seem to work pretty well. One of the unique features of these is they actually turn. You can see they're on a swivel there. Uh, so a lot of times I'll, I'll actually use the swivel as I'm doing push-ups. Weights. You're going to need some weights. Now this is kind of like an Uber set of weights. This is the uh, 1090 Select Tech Dumbbells. I bought these about a year and a half ago as well. Uh, I don't regret the decision. It's a great investment. They've held up really, really well. These are the uh, bigger ones where they go all the way up to 90 pounds. As you can see, uh, I haven't had to go up to 90 pounds, by the way. But you basically just select it here, and, it's, and it changes your weights, which is really nice because through a lot of these workouts, they, they really expect you to change weights pretty fast and move on to the next exercise. With the 1090s, though, they only go down to 10 pounds, so I've, I've had to get some 5-pound and 8-pound weights as well, uh, especially for a lot of the exercises that are, that are high reps. Uh, you need some lighter weights. I would highly recommend those, um, but you don't need them. Uh, you can go out, especially since they're they're a pretty pricey item, you can go out and buy 5 pound, 10 pound, 15 pound, 20 pound dumbbells and that will get you started no problem. And as you get stronger you can buy you know 25 pounds or 30 pounds as you need. But if you have the money it is a good investment if you plan on doing this for a long time, which I sure hope you do. A bench. You don't need a bench. Tony does all of his exercise without a bench. He just uses a standard old chair, and a standard chair will work just fine. I happen to have a bench. Uh, I especially like it for the exercises where you're lying down. Uh, the floor is, you know, you can use a floor, but I, I prefer the bench since I have one. Again, this is a nice, nice to have option. It's not a, it's not a required option. A yoga mat. As Tony says, if you're doing yoga, you need a good mat. This is an investment you really need to make. You can't do yoga without a mat. You'll, you'll end up hurting yourself. I also suggest using a yoga block, especially at the beginning. I had never done yoga before, and I really needed that block to help me through some of the exercises. And then you find out as you progress through the program and you, you actually need to stretch beyond uh, your toes or things like that, you, you need it for some of the advanced moves. So it's a good investment to make. You can buy it at any good sporting goods store. And what else? Well, the pull-up bar. It's going to be your friend. Um, I struggle with pull-ups, always have, uh, but I'm getting better. And you just got to stick with it. As you can see, this is uh, to our bathroom in our basement. It's not pretty, it's not glamorous, but it works. And it's really the only doorway that works down here. Uh, I use a chair uh, near the end of my workouts when I need to. And you can see that I put uh, carpet under it so it doesn't slip and slide as I'm, I'm trying to uh, assist my pull-ups. So that's my pull-up bar. You need to get one of those. I bought that one at Sports Authority, I think. And what are some other things? Uh, well, bands. You guys know I travel a lot from reading my blog. I just pack the bands in my um, suitcase. For some places, some hotels have, have weight rooms, and I'll go there and use the weight room, but some of them don't, so uh, they're, they're nice to have. Uh, they can also replace your weights. If you don't want to buy weights and you just want to do bands, especially if you're looking to tone more than to uh, bulk up, bands work great. Uh, that's a mat that I bought um, to do Ab Ripper X back when I first started this. I replaced it with this mat. But you, you need a good mat, and you could use your yoga mat as well when you're doing Ab Ripper X. But you need a mat while you're doing uh, some floor exercises. And that's about it. I, I think, um, you know, you can see I'm starting back and biceps today. Typically, I turn the music off. As, as, uh, and, and Tony's jokes, as, as funny as they are the first few times, they get a little, get, get a little long after... You've gone through them 15 times, so I'll turn the volume down on that and then just play my own music. 
and just listen to the cadence uh, that Tony gives us. The other thing that I, I wanted to show you guys was kind of how I keep track of my workouts. So you can see this is the last month of my hybrid. I got a week and a half left. You can see Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Back and biceps is today, day 80. What I try and do is I keep, keep track on here for each of the exercises I write down what my average heart rate was. So you can see yesterday I was in Dallas, I did plyometrics, my average heart rate was 140 beats per minute. Uh, when I did chest, shoulders, and tries it was 127, then I did cardio abs, it was 128. I also try and keep track of how many scoops of supplement I use, so you can see on some of the cardio days I just use one scoop of jack, on some of the stronger resistance days I use two scoops of jack. The other thing is I, I try and show where I'm at, so if I'm traveling, like yesterday I was in Dallas, uh, the previous week I had a day trip to Miami, so I used that as my day off, and kind of, so you can see I was, you know, worked out the 14th, the 15th, used my day off when I had to travel to Miami in the 16th and 17th, 18th. So data is power, right? Keep track, of, keep track of the data. And then on the workout sheets, what I do, so today's back and biceps, you can see it's my last week. And what I try and do is, you can see like one, two, three, and four, right? So you go back, back, biceps, biceps. Then I kind of draw a line to mentally put a line in the sand for myself to say, okay, that's one set, back, back, biceps, biceps. Then you got another four, then you got another four, and then finally at exercise 12, I, I drew two lines to remind myself that, hey, that's my first break, right? That's when he gives you a 30 or 60 second break. And then you, you're halfway done and you got to go through another 12. So it helps me as I'm kind of going through this thing to kind of to mentally prepare myself for what's next. The other thing that I recommend is on the back, I actually write how long it's taken me to do each of these, right? So, for example, you know, I put the start end, start time, end time, and then the, you know, total time it took me to do it. And then my average beats per minute. So you can see this was uh, upper body plus, no, this was upper body weight training. This was the insanity one. You know, at the beginning, it was tough for me to keep up. I was pausing quite a bit. It took me 54 minutes. And the last two times I've done it, uh, within a little bit of margin of error, you know, I basically didn't have to press pause. And you can see my heart rate increased quite a bit too. You know, I was working a lot harder. So you can see not only from your reps and your, your weight that you're using, but also just from pure how long it's taking you and what your average heart rate is. The other thing that I do on here, for example, is when uh, for pull-ups, and push-ups when I when I have to do anything assisted I put it in parentheses so you can see over time here wide front pull-ups I've done gone from six and then I do ten assisted you know in the next in the last two weeks I've been able to up it to seven um, and so on and so forth that way I keep track of how many I'm doing assisted and unassisted same thing for push-ups although most of my push-ups now I, I don't have to go to my knees and I think that's about it, guys. So, uh, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. Shoot me an email. Uh, comment on the post. But this is pretty much it. This is, this is where you, you go at it every day. And, uh, you know, remember to modify if you need to. You know, these, these workouts are, are tough. And the important thing is just to stick with it. You don't want to get injured. Uh, have the right equipment. And um, if you need to, you know, modify, you can do that.